Hi. Hey, this is the Blind Ambition Podcast with your buddy, Jack Kelly. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, money. And I know the blind audience in particular loves talking about money and total compensation and all that kind of good stuff. But we're going to gear a little bit more towards the Gen Z cohort, the Gen Zs. And this, this is for anyone who's a Gen Z, anyone who has a parent of a Gen Z, anyone who's kind of a millennial and has like a younger sibling who's Gen Z and want to know what's going on as it relates to their finances. And where we're going with this is I saw this crazy statistic, this survey where Gen Z's and Gen Z's, Christy, what, about 20, 21, 22, right? Is that 19? Yeah, they were born yeah. in the 90s, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, you know, early 20s, you know, maybe hitting some, you know, mid twenties by now. And all right, check this out. There's a survey, right? From this company called Empower. And they were taking a look to see what Gen Z's felt that they needed to have as a salary or kind of a net wealth so that they could be comfortable. Now, now do you want to take a guess what a Gen Z feels they should earn. Now, Gen Z, like we said, maybe 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 or so. What what would you think that they would say they were looking for in a salary? Do, 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 do. <laughs> so, Christine, do you, do you have an idea what they were saying that they would want for, a, you know, a salary? I would have projected that they would have said between two and three. Did you want me to say the real number? Like two, two, two hundred thousand as a salary? I, yeah, for Gen Z, two and three. Because I feel like a lot of them are actually making a good deal of money for their age. All right, let's keep going. So that's on the low side. That's on the very yeah. low side. You, you, want, you want to give it another shot? Yeah, uh, I can reveal the number, which is 600,000. Around 600,000. So, all right. So if you're a 20 year old, your expectation of a salary, we're talking about salary, not net worth, you know, not, not, you know, a house and whatever, this is just your salary. So they feel, nah, I think I should get $600,000 as a salary. You know, I'm just, so you know, I got to be clear, you know, and be honest, I am the parent of two Gen Z's. Now, I know you may say, Jack, you look so young. How do you have two Gen Z's? But I do. I have two young Gen Z's who are in their 20s. And you've probably seen in so many articles, like for whatever reason, you know, there's a lot of Gen Z bashing. But we've seen this every, like, every group. Like for a while back, remember, millennials, everyone, oh, millennials, they're lazy. They all get a trophy. So I guess it comes with the territory. Every new generation gets shit on by the other generations. I, I don't know why they do that, but it's stupid, but it happens. Now, with, with, the, with the money aspect, it really is interesting because they're saying they want $600,000 as, as a, as a you know, salary. But then to be comfortable, Chris, what, what were they saying that they needed to be like happy in terms of their whole net worth? 9.47 million. All right. <laughs> Nine point seven, very specific. Nine point seven million dollars as a net worth as a Gen Z in your early twenties, or maybe even your your late twenties. Is that uh, Delulu? And if you're not familiar with Gen Z, that's like delusional. Are you, uh, is they, are they delusional, or is that it's a survey and they're just effing around with the survey and and just like goofing on the person who gave the survey, and it's all bullshit. Or do they just not really know like how much people actually earn? Are they in denial? Is it because like they look at social media, they look on TV and they think everybody's rich, like Elon Musk? What what's like how is it such a disconnect, Chris? And it's interesting because when you look at it within like the context of income distribution around mm -hmm. the like to earn even half a million dollars a year would place these folks in the top 1%. So right out the gate, they just expect to be in the top 1%. And that's out of like 32 out of the 50 states in the US. Why do you think 
it, put, put aside the survey, like, why do you think they would think that they should be able to get so much money at such a young age? Like, where does that come from? I think because like the times that we're living through, uh -huh. you know, we're living through a time where it's really expensive to live. So I feel like, of course, they're going to have a high benchmark for financial success just to keep up with the high cost of living. But they haven't lived enough. So then the numbers are a little skewed. Hmm. So they're thinking, okay, like you go to the supermarket, let's say they go to the supermarket with their family, right? And they mm -hmm. ring it up and it's like two, three hundred dollars. So, you know, for people who, you know, go to the supermarket, I know a lot of the people who watch this and listen to it are like stupid wealthy. So they may not go themselves to the supermarket, but that's one of the chores I do. So I'm, I pay attention to it. And without exaggeration, every time I go to the supermarket and it rings up, I look, the, I look at the cashier in the eyes and they don't have to say anything. And I don't have to say anything. And they usually then say, yeah, this is crazy. And everybody says it's crazy how expensive everything is. So maybe that's it, that they're just figuring out, hey, if you go for a family of four and you're spending three, $400, well, like if you have to get an apartment, if you have to get a home, yeah, you're going to need a crazy amount of money to keep up with high cost inflation. So maybe they're not so delulu. Yeah. And it brings up the question of like, what even is financial success? Mm -hmm. To some, it's like just being able to purchase things that bring them joy. Or some, it's like the having the luxury of free time and saying no to certain obligations. And then for some, it's like just literally being able to pay their bills or finding job satisfaction throughout their careers. And then for some, it's, it's home ownership. And to buy a home is stupid expensive. And it feels like an unrealistic goal for a lot of Gen Z and millennials. Yeah, see, this is where I think there's a big problem, you know, in our country and in our economic system. And, and is that, so let's say the average person who, you know, Gen Z or young millennial went to college, took on debt of 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, and they took on this debt and going, you know, to a university and majoring in something that's like, you know, medieval literature. And now you get out of college and there's not a big need for someone who's an expert in medieval literature. So you're fucked. Like you can't get a job, you know, in terms of, you know, writing for Forbes and covering this topic for young people starting out in college, it is brutal. It's brutal. There's not a whole lot of opportunities. Now, if you're a software engineer or a software developer or things like that, yes, that's there's still options now, but that's fading away too as AI is kind of encroaching on that as well. So it's really rough for these people. Um, that and they're emboldened to like live in, they have to live in a certain area. Let's say if you have to live in San Francisco, the high, there's a high cost of living there. So mm -hmm. then, Yes, you're making a lot, but then you're also paying a lot to just like live there as well. See, this is great. And this, right. So it's not just the Gen Zs anymore. It's like every generation. So exactly what you're saying. So let's say you want to live in New York City. Let's say you want to live in, um, you know, LA and San Francisco, you know, Philly, any big city now, it costs so much money to rent or to buy. And that the data here's and here's another thing it's just not only you know renting and buying a house but it's like the insurance on all that like today i just got this not today like a few days ago i used to have like my life insurance was like a thousand bucks something like that ten thousand dollars now like what the hell out of nowhere and this is why when that guy was it thompson the guy from the the Brian united Tom health why people weren't so sad that he's get, getting shot. You know, when you look at it, like, why, like, you, you took my policy from, and I'm not exaggerating, Chris, this is from 1,000 to 10,000. That's crazy. And then in places like California that have a lot of fires and earthquakes and stuff, I can't even imagine, I don't even think some of them can get insurance. So they're risking everything. That if something goes wrong with their home, they're done for. Yeah, we saw that with like the hurricanes in Florida, right? This past fall. So, so let, and here's another thing that should be very perturbing, and, and I don't want to make it all about Gen Zs. So, I but I'm using that as a jump off point because 
you know, that's the new generation coming up. And this is, you know, they're going to be the ones who are going to be a big part of, of the workforce and such. What's, what's also very concerning is not, is that everything costs so much. When you look at the data, people aren't getting married. They're not buying homes and they're not having kids. And I know on my side of the, like with my family, my extended family, people who have, uh, you know, married or have partners and they're, you know, at the time of a life where usually you would be having kids, none of them are having kids. And when I talk to them about it, it's the money factor. They're not making enough money to hold down their job, pay the mortgage on their house, you know, on the car, all the other expenses. And they just feel like, with how, how is it going to be possible to have, you know, now to pay maybe 5,000, I don't know how much childcare costs a month, but I super expensive. So, so this has like crazy ramifications for this whole country. So like, if you're not getting, if you're not having babies, and I, I don't mean to be over the top dramatic, but when I say, of course, there are babies come, you know, the baby, but not to the extent you need to keep everything growing. And that's one of the reasons why I think there is this big push to have illegal aliens come in here and, and legal, you know, immigrants come in here because we're not going to have enough people to do all these jobs. Yeah, we're currently having boomers aging out of the the job market. So certain sectors are experiencing a work shortage mm. of um, like, I think within manufacturing and then within construction, because so many people have aged out. So then <laughs> we have to fill these needs. Yeah, it does. It's, it's going to change a lot because then you have all these people who are opting out as, you know, they're, you know, you know the, I spoke to this guy, Aaron, who uh, was on former podcast, on the you know uh, last podcast or so, uh, he was the Glassdoor chief economist, and what he was saying is that the vast majority he gave him percentage. I want to say it was like seventy five percent. So seventy seventy five percent of the baby boomers, pieced out. They're out. They're not. They're not working anymore. And it's so funny because you don't see that anywhere else. Like I just heard it from him. And the guy's a smart guy. He's been doing this. He was you know, the Glassdoor chief economist, the Zillow chief economist, he worked for the treasury department. So he knows his shit and 75% are out. So either there could be an opening to buy businesses from these boomers who are getting out, or maybe there's, there's room to grow within different organizations and companies because they're not there anymore blocking the way. So I don't, I don't know if maybe that's, some solace to see how these demographics are playing out. And then we did see that more Gen Z is open to like blue, um, blue collar work, mm -hmm. some manufacturing and construction. And you can make a lot of money in like those blue collar jobs. So mm -hmm. honestly, maybe they might be able to meet those goals, especially if there's a shortage, then employers are going to pay more to fill those spots. And, and I think for many people, and again, now this is kind of, you know, pivoting a little way just for the Gen Z part, but just, just as career advice and guidance. So maybe you have to start looking at these different things for yourself and for your kids. Like, you know, I'll give you an example. I was speaking to this, uh, this boomer guy and he was like a chemical engineer and his father-in-law was a, you know, you know, baby boomer plus. And he said, Hey, he had this kind of hardware store. And he said, Hey, I, you know, know how much you're earning. You can make double if you want to, you know, I'll sell you, uh, you know, my business and you can take it over. And he did take it over and he did really well. And the guy was a chemist. He's like a chemical engineer. And now he was like in this like retail hardware type of store, but making way more money than he was as a chemical engineer, which is mind blowing. But maybe this is a pivot point. Maybe this is very important for people, for the Gen Zs, for the Gen Z's parents, you know, for anyone else listening, saying, hey, things are changing now. So maybe the college degree isn't worth what it used to be. And we shouldn't put as much pressure on every kid to have a college degree and come in huge debt to maybe start looking at the trades and looking at the blue collar jobs. 
because they make a lot of money and you need to like you need an electrician you need a plumber right you need a welder you can't go without you could go out you, you could do without someone who has medieval literature studies you could you know society will still get by but things are not going to go well if you don't have plumbers and you, you don't have carpenters right and you don't have that that would be problematic we're also seeing the trend of private equity companies scooping up these types mm. of so it is making a lot more people millionaires as well. It's 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 so interesting how like things change. But when you look at the you know mainstream media, they don't have these conversations. They're still like, all right, everyone has to go to college. Everyone has to be in debt. See, I've always thought this. I've always thought maybe because I'm a contrarian, is that why would you even when you graduate? Let's say you graduate for college, right? Number one. Well, it's crazy to take on huge debt and it's crazy to get a major that you're not going to be able to use it, you know, and make any money from it. But then to go out, get an apartment, you have your own phone, your own car, all this stuff. And, and you're just putting yourself in debt because you're not making enough money to pay the you know, student loans and all the other bills. Like you can't go on like this. It has to change. Right, it can't just keep. Yeah, it's and not going to work anymore. And if you're single, you don't have a person to share that mm. rent with and those bills and stuff. So that also makes it in incredibly hard. I feel like there's like a single tax, you know. Mm. And, and what I noticed too with the millennials, the uh, Gen Zs, and even now I'm starting to see Gen Xs and Boomers going on social media to be influencers. Now, TikTok, I don't know what's going to happen. It seems like now they're going to kind of kick TikTok to the curb. I hope not, but it seems that way is playing out. But there's been a huge shift in the amount of people trying to be these social influencers as a, as a profession. Yeah, they're making it their primary source of income, which I do feel is like a little risky, especially if you look at you know, the potential TikTok ban, a lot of these people are going to be stripped of their primary source of income. Now, what do you think? Do you think that they really are going to ban TikTok? I don't know. It's, we're, especially we're living in such like a volatile geo mm -hmm. moment right now. And I think that people are like, our collective conscious is like mm -hmm. raising to the point where I think a lot of like these elite ultra wealthy people are kind of scared of that so you know they might try to buy it up and and maybe influence through there or i kind of hope that they don't like and maybe right. we don't deserve it at this point you know and i think china said that they're not willing to sell it so i don't know what's gonna happen but i think that you know our government and maybe even like ceos and executives they're they're afraid of tiktok now, what about this? Now, Christine, if I'm not mistaken, because, you know, you have to be careful about things like that. You're you're a, a woman, right? Yes. Okay. So just wanted to, you know, we're in the same thing. What do you think? What do you think about what's going on with OnlyFans? And for the audience, I think most of you know, especially you dudes there, you know what OnlyFans are. Don't pretend you don't. But if you don't know, that's, if my understanding, basically... It's like what soft porn really where you're paying because you really like this one person and you just want to follow her around and, uh, you know, take a look at her without her clothes on sort of thing. That's the amount of money that they're making is crazy. We're talking about they're pulling in more money than NBA stars. We're talking double digit millions like of dollars. Now, what about that? Like, what does that say, Chris? It's like, as we talk about social influence, now we're taking it even to the next level. Is that like like showing that our our society is just like just just crumbling? That <laughs> you need to be only you know get on only fans to make a lot of money, and that's the way to do it. Yeah. It is worth saying, though, I think OnlyFans is beyond that soft porn. I think it's almost like the new Patreon, where mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think there's like chefs on there and stuff um, creating content as well. So I don't think it's just that. But yeah, it, 
it is interesting to hear because I think there was one one girl who made the what four million or something. <laughs> on. He forgot. It's like it's the number. Now, to be fair, who knows? They could be lying. They could not really know numbers and just think that they're earning it, or maybe they're making like let's say the four million you say, but then maybe there's a lot of cost behind it mm -hmm. and what have you. So it's, you don't not getting all that four million. Yeah. Maybe I'm just saying that to, because I think the numbers are so crazy. I, you know, I can't, I can't comprehend it. My head's exploding. <laughs> it, but to me, that stuff is also fleeting as well. You know, you may be the hawker right now until mm -hmm. it comes along and then, you know, you're not making as much money. So I think when it comes to money, but then also, let's say if you're an influencer, I think it's important to kind of diversify your platforms, diversify your income streams. Now, now with these <laughs> influencers, do they really, do they also make a lot of money, do you think, or no? Because I really don't know enough about it. No, they make a stupid amount. Because like right. I follow some influencers and it's yeah. interesting to kind of track some of their trajectories. Like, you look at like their before picture versus like their after picture they don't even look like the same people just because what how like money will change you it'll literally change your face and stuff in the house you live in what is that because you're getting you know you're getting plastic surgery and everything or, yeah, or is it just feel pressure to keep up with um like their appearances because their appearance is their entire job and stuff people don't a lot of people don't want them for their their thoughts and stuff it's more so just their looks that are getting them by their looks are their their currency i think all right don't mock me and make mm -hmm. fun of me but like i don't really understand this whole social media influencer thing like what what like i, I think like, how, what do you do how do you do it like why would someone care some rando on instagram is like showing what clothes and like i i, I generally don't really get it Companies are paying a lot. I think that- Oh, they, now I get it now. Okay. It's yeah, a lot. <laughs> it's replacing like traditional advertising. So instead of placing the money in like magazines and like billboards and maybe TV commercials, they're paying influencers mm. and even celebrities. Like we don't notice how many celebrities are also playing the same game on social media where they could get paid like hundreds of thousands of dollars for one single post based on your audience size. But again, not to sound like a like a like a retard, but like because somebody is pretty and they're showing off like whatever they're selling, mm -hmm. and now everyone's gonna run and buy it. Like that's what people do. Like these people are setting up like Amazon storefronts and they mm -hmm. have clicks, so they're able to track where these sales are coming from and they're driving revenue for these companies. And then now there's even like a, a bit of like a hierarchy too within like the influencers where they're like spoiling like the top influencers who make them the most money. There was one drama where some got like expensive jewelry or expensive handbag and then mm -hmm. like the micro influencers got like a really ch cheap um, PR package and stuff. So yeah, some people are able to make a lot of money and then a lot of them are becoming business owners and like launching their own products as well. So how do you do that? Like, how do you get started? If someone wanted to, who's watching this, listening to this and say, Hey, maybe I could do this. Like what, how, how, do you have any idea how to get that started? I guess you just pick up a camera, you talk yeah. it, and you post it. And then, uh, I think it helps too when people have like their specific niche because mm -hmm. I think that'll help you stand out. So, do you, so so your suggestion is like for the audience, we should start being influencers and going on OnlyFans, and <laughs> is that is that the move? And then being a welder <laughs> and stuff like that kind of thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm a welder influencer. <laughs> I'm a plumber influence. Can I get plumber influence? There are people who my grandfather's a plumber. I don't know. Maybe I have that in my DNA to do that. I, I've seen that online where like, let's say if you grew up without a dad, there was like one yes. guy who was like, you know, like literally playing ball, <laughs> like playing ball with the audience so that they could yeah. get like that experience and teaching them how to, you know, fix a car and stuff. So there's a market for everything these days. And just to circle back with a Gen Z mm -hmm. that we're talking about, do you think like with the big money that they're asking is because, you know, they, 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 it, 
Remember during the COVID pandemic and everyone was doing these YOLO trades, you only live once kind of thing, mm-hmm. where you're going after AMC stock at the time and you know the Reddit, whatever Reddit's Reddit was saying, hey, here's the next big thing to buy. Mm-hmm. And you were hoping to get that big hit and get rich from it. Do, do, do you think that's kind of also the mindset maybe for the younger generation that, hey, I'm going to buy this cryptocurrency, this altcoin, you know, Bitcoin is going to be too expensive for them now, you know, a hundred thousand dollars of Bitcoin, mm-hmm. but maybe going after all these cryptos to say, hey, maybe I could get this moonshot and I'm done and I'm good. Yeah. I do see people kind of trying to find like those get rich schemes. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to not be scammed online because I do see a lot of people like trying to sell courses online, like how to get rich fast mm-hmm. or or even like how to do marketing and then you sell products. Like they have like those MLMs that people get sucked mm-hmm. into. It's like the new Avon where there's there's now these companies that that get women to recruit other women to like sell products. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to not get sucked into those kind of scams. So, you know, let's to, to kind of maybe wrap it up a little bit. I wonder, are you better off? Because this is like what we've, you, you, yourself, myself, you know, the generations, you know, before us, the whole thing was like, for the most part, go into like the workforce, lawyer, doctor, dentist, you know, accountant, you know, all these kind of safe type of jobs and everything will be fine, everything will work out. But now we're learning eh, not so much when, when you see all these different layoffs, especially in the tech sector and other sectors. Maybe do you think we're going through a new period that getting the college degree is not the be all and end all? Working in an office under fluorescent lights on a like a like a crappy little desk and spending, you know, eight plus hours there plus an hour commuting, an hour commuting back. And maybe that's also what the younger generations, they're looking and seeing their parents getting laid off, getting worried about getting laid off, spending all that money for schooling and it didn't pay out. And the rug was pulled out from under them. So maybe it does make sense to start saying, hey, maybe I should be an influencer. Maybe I should be an OnlyFans. And like you're saying, I didn't realize they had chefs and other things like that. So mm-hmm. maybe OnlyFans or maybe, you know, maybe look at the trades or maybe buy a business, you know, from some boomer who's retiring and can't really, you know, because if you're like 65 or 70 and you're doing really hardcore like construction, it's tough. Your knees are blown out. It's, you know, I know a lot of people in my family who do that, like, you just can't keep doing that. Like when you're in your, you know, 60, you know, late fifties, even early fifties or early, you know, mid forties. So you got to do something else. So they're going to sell their businesses. So maybe that's something to look into, or you become an apprentice for one of these things. So maybe the whole thing, like the conversation we have now, maybe a year from now is going to be like standard. Like people wouldn't even think this was like, oh my God, what are you guys talking about? This is crazy shit. Maybe a year from now, it'd be like, oh yeah, that's, yeah, screw college, doesn't make sense. Unless you like have some degree where you know you can make a lot of money and pay back your loans. Otherwise you have to start looking at these other venues. Does it, does I, that, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think I think we're going to be living through an interesting period where there's a lot of disruption to the status quo. And I think in that will be uh, like college attendance and stuff. Um, Cause I feel like we're deviating from kind of like this elitist perspective where you need to have an education. Yeah. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see. And because another, yeah, mm-hmm. just, to, just to, to kind of go back to your point on that, because it used to be, okay, oh, you went to Yale, you went to Harvard, but then you see these people who are the so-called elites and how bad did they screw up our country? You know, how bad did they screw us with COVID? So like the brand now is questionable. And then when you had all the things with, you know, all these like protests, what have you, and the way these universities reacted, it's like, what? There's em- there's employers that vowed to not even hire from those yeah. institutions and stuff. So yeah, that that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. So after a while, you're like, it's the, it's the old emperor, where, you know, has no clothes on, where it's like, you realize all these so-called elites, they don't know Jack, they don't know shit. 
And it's just like they have the paper to show, oh, because I went to the school, I'm smart. And then you realize, in the, you know, maybe you're book smart, but then in the real world, boy, because look, look where we, we are now. So like, yeah, you guys weren't so great. And not only not so great, like I was just, you know, writing like a draft of an article, just like 50 different wars going on right now. And I hate to say it, we're involved, like stirring the pot with most of it. So like, maybe we do need to change, you know, the people in charge, right? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's also important to talk about this too, because let's say if Gen Z has like this, this high lofty goal, like you don't want them once they're met with like what their actual salary will be to be met with like inadequacy and like feel mm -hmm. delusionment because that won't be good for their job satisfaction. It won't be good for their mental health either. So I think it's important to talk about these kinds of topics. Yeah. Yeah. And I think and they're smart to know that when they look at their parents, their uncles, their aunts, and, you know, other older folks who went through this and they realize their lives are pretty rough to commute back and forth, you know, worry about layoffs, worry about this that they prize more of a work-life balance, you know? Mm -hmm. they, they prize their well-being. But when you look at the mass media, when they write articles about it, they're just like chastising them, like shaking their finger at them. No, oh, you're lazy. No, like it's reasonable. If you see everyone around you doing something, it doesn't seem to really work. And how many people do you see are just miserable with their lives? And how many people are 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 drug, you know, using drugs and, and what have and alcohol to because they're just miserable? So maybe, yeah, there has to be a better way. So maybe they're looking to go, hey, you know what? I'm not it's not that I'm lazy or I don't want to work. It's just like I don't think the way things are set up is advantageous to having a well-balanced life and job and work right and, and always look at the people who are saying those types of things there was recently like a video i saw where this woman she was an entrepreneur talking about how specifically i think gen z is kind of lazy and they don't want to work and then if you look into her background she was born into a rich family <laughs> yes yes for the company and stuff so, so that yes is you know, people like that can afford to, you know, do free internship, like internships for free and stuff because their parents paved their way. So always look at the people who are being critical and then see what kind of, you know, background they have for additional context because a lot of them were handed it. So, uh, yeah, that's all I'll say. I agree. Yeah, yeah. You always got to love those people who are chiding you. Yeah, you should do this. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps, you know. Make your own way. And then, yeah, their parents are freaking ridiculously wealthy. You know, yeah. and their grandparents were ridiculously wealthy. And the great great parents were ridiculously wealthy. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. So you're lecturing me now where you just got everything handed to you. Okay. Exactly. All right. So I love how we kind of really completely veer off topic. <laughs> I think that makes it more interesting, right? Yeah. So, all right. So I, I know we started with Gen Z being delusional in terms of what they're looking for, but I think we've come to this place that, like, yeah, it seems we're shifting. And and the college degree, the so-called elites who've been running things and screwing everything up, maybe, you know, where I could tell you in my neighborhood, if somebody turned back the clock a little bit was saying, oh, I'm not going to go to college, they'd be like shunned. Oh, my God, you're not going to college. Now it's like, all right, maybe it makes sense to go into the trades, to the skilled trades, to maybe buy out a business and maybe be a social influencer and try these other things that you might enjoy and then make a crazy amount of money too. I agree. All right. Well, thanks. I uh, hope I hope you enjoy these things because what we're trying to do with the podcast is just kind of give ideas, right? We're trying to help people we try to give some good advice. Um, you know, sometimes it's Chris and I talking, but we have a whole lot of guest lines up too. You know, I, I like mixing it around. And just to give you ideas that you're not thinking of because you don't see it in the mainstream media. So we're trying to bring up these other things to start thinking about for yourself, for your family, for your kids, for your brother, for your sister, whatever, and and, and help them out and lead, for them to lead their best lives. So I really appreciate you taking the time to watch, to listen. And uh, we're going to keep, churning them out. And if you have any ideas, suggestions, feel free to hit us up. So thank you very much.